I've got Matt working on some resolved boundary drawings, and Julian's got a couple to do. So Matt's like, I don't know, I, I need to, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. He doesn't know what I want. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and tell him what I want. Try and tell him uh, what I want. All depends on where you go. Everybody's got a different deliverable. So we already kind of walked through the sheet layout, Mike. So today I'm mostly going to show Matt what I want in model space. Okay. okay. So there's not very much that needs to go on this drawing, but what goes in it is really important. So we have. Maybe uh, four or five layers, maybe. Okay, so we have this is what I call the subject parcel line. And we're gonna do we're gonna do one on we're gonna clean one up in the paint cat. This is a right away center line. Uh, this is, I think we're use this for monument lines. So San Francisco has some called monument lines. Some other cities do too. That's a monument line that's offset from the center line. Then we've got like uh, easements. And then we have tie lines. And I can't remember, we might use the same. I can't remember the line type, but we might, we've got another, uh, we might use the same line for right away side lines, or we might use a thin solid line, I can't remember. I believe we use the thin solid for the right away yeah. side lines, and the tie line and the easement line are similar. I think one's the hidden okay. and one's the hidden too. Okay. So, those are the layers that go in here, and then the only other thing that really needs to be in the drawing in the, mo in the model space part is uh, monument labels, which I'm going to show you guys how I do it, and line labels, which I'll show you how I do. Okay, and then there might be some notes or call outs depending on the boundary, and, and you're going to see we have an example. Okay, um, the other thing that might go in there. depending on where we're at, is some physical occupation. So usually when I'm in San Francisco, we should be showing some, we should be showing some buildings probably. And then in a lot of other parts of the Bay Area, there's not a lot of monumentation. Um, we need to be showing uh, curves, and maybe curves and buildings. So we might have some occupation. And in this example we're gonna look at, we will, we're gonna have some buildings in there. Okay, so that's basically what goes in model space. And the point of the drawing is to have a definitive source for the boundary line work that okay, gets used on the project. So you weren't here for the conversation, Mike, but nobody outside of the mapping team should be in this drawing to make edits. Okay, so this drawing gets set up, and then if somebody else wants a copy of it, like they get a, they get an XREF, they get an XREF in the base file. They like I shouldn't have a civil engineer in here messing around. Okay. They still get to it from an XREF, though, right? They can, yeah. But like in theory, if somebody screws this drawing up, it it's, it it screws everything up. Yeah. Okay. So that's just what we have. So it is a, it's a really important drawing. So it, it is a it's the authoritative source of. The, the boundary lines for the project. So if you if you have another drawing, like a parcel map drawing or something else, and somebody's copied some line work and tweaked it, and there's a difference between the parcel map drawing and the boundary resolve drawing, this drawing controls. It's the it's the authoritative source. Okay? Which means it needs to be right. The other purpose, whole purpose of this drawing is something happens to me, Matt's license now, there's a question about a boundary we did or we're doing additional work. He needs to be able to go in and understand how we put the boundary together, right? That, that should not be, we should not be using a parcel map or a land title survey or a record survey for that. No. Because there's all kinds of information we may have internally that doesn't necessarily go on one of those maps, okay? 
that doesn't mean you should still be able to, to understand how we resolve the boundary on a record survey or a parcel map, but I'll give you an example. Maybe we went around, maybe we went the next street over and looked for some center line lawns and didn't find them. You might not necessarily put that on your record survey depending on what you're doing, but it sure would be good to know that internally or we might go repeat that work again, right? I've had more than one project here where I've, been, I've picked up a boundary survey for one, from one of my predecessors and I've had to go relook for monuments because all he told me was what we found. He didn't tell me what we looked for. And so if I see a monument that might control and we didn't find it and I don't know if we looked for it, what do I got to go do? Look for it. And probably a lot of those monuments we looked for already, but I just don't know because we didn't write it down. Okay? So we can add that over here. Search areas we can put on here. Okay? Now, I think I've talked to Mike about this before. I'm maybe a little bit with Matt, but I want to just show you guys something else real quick. Because when we go in and do our line labels, I have a specific way of doing that. Okay, so I want to explain to you how I label my distances. So there's three or four types of distances you can have in a boundary drawing. I've actually written a, a there. I've got a little article about this. I've written. I don't think I published it, but I'll try and I'll see if I can find it and share it with you guys. So you've got measured distances. You've got record. You've got calculated. And you've got what I call calculated from record. I don't use that as much here because people don't like it. But I've used it in other places. Okay, so four types. Okay, and these are how we abbreviate these. M for measured, R for record. Now, there's usually a number that comes after this. R1, that should match your reference table, right? R1, R2, R3, R4. What record did we hold? Calculated is C. And then I used to have a calculated from record, so I'd say CR, calculated record, R1. That means I calculated something from R1. Okay, and I'm going to give you a quick example. There's some rules for each of these that you need to follow. So let's look at an example. Okay, so solid circle is a found mon, hollow circle we didn't find anything. Okay, so my rule for measures is really simple. You can only have a measured where you've got two monuments on each end of the line. Because if you don't have a monument, how did you measure it? Now, so other surveyors use measured for calculated all the time, and I don't like that. Right? If you put M on it, you better have measured something in the field. That's how I feel about it, right? This is my opinion. It doesn't mean it's right. Okay, so monument on each end of the line, or you measure between a monument and a fence. You gotta like that is a something you can directly go out into the field and measure. Sure. Measure. Yeah. Okay? Record comes from another document. Calculated is something that we've calculated. Okay? We've done some math. Calculated from record means I've calculated a value based purely on record information. I'm going to show you an example of that. Okay, so in my mind, there's only two lines. If this is our survey, there's only two lines on this. Let's just label them. L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6. Don't fall asleep, Lane. I know some of this is... Okay, so there's only two lines in my mind on this map that get a measured distance. Mm -hmm. Which ones? L1 and L4. L1 and L4, that's it. Okay, now, they could all have a record value, probably, right, if they're shown on another map. Okay, so let me show you where I would have a calculated record. He, and then this happens a lot. This guy doesn't show this in connecting line, but he gives us a bearing distance here. So we can calculate these with Kogo, right? And then we can inverse here and come up with a distance. Okay, did he show it on his map? No. No. So it's not a record, is it? No. But it's calculated from record. Correct. And I think in some cases it's useful. We can have a measure here, can't we? Mm -hmm. L9. So I think it's useful sometimes to say, hey, I found 150 feet measured, and he found 149. 
He didn't find it, but it was a 149 calculated from record. That tells me, hey, I, I'm a foot off from what that guy from, even though he didn't connect the dots, he did the math. He just didn't draw the line on his map. Because you can do a useful comparison there sometimes. That's what I call a value that's calculated from record. I'll give you another example. If you've got a map that shows four lots, some maps will come in like this. Sorry, three lots. And this is 100 feet, and 100 feet, and 100 feet. And we found these two mons. We didn't find the two in the middle. Okay, but he never shows the overall on his map. A lot of times they don't. Okay, so I want to do a comparison here. So I found 301. Okay, so 301 measured. Okay, I don't like to say 300 record because did he show that value? No, I don't like to do that. I think it's better. I'm the only surveyor that in the world that does this, but I like to so show calculated from record R1 because I had to do some math here, didn't I? Right. Okay. Okay, and that's an oversimplified example. Sometimes you get, um, you know, there's other kinds of math. You might have to do some, some proportioning or some other math that may not be directly evident on the face of the map. I want people to know that I did some math here. Hey, I had to calculate this value from the record. It wasn't directly shown on the map. Okay, so that's what I use to calculate the record for. Okay, calculated is when I've done some other math. So I'm gonna, I'll show you an example. The, the calculated For me, calculated values are values that I've done math on that you need more than just the record, than a record doc to do, okay? And I've got to, I'll give you one example. So let's just say, let me think of an example here. Let's come over here. There's a road center line over here, okay? that this guy didn't show on his map. And I went out and tied, we found these two center line lines and I tied it. Because I want to know how does the how does the record width fit with the with this guy's map, right? Okay, and so if, if I'm gonna show a line over here, a tie line, let's say I show these these four tie lines right here, okay? Is that a measured? Do I have a monument no, here? It's not measured. It's not measured because there's nothing on the other end of the line to measure to, right? Is it a calculated record? Yes. It's not a calculated record. It's not on the record. Because it's not on the map. Check. Okay, so what is it? It's calculated. It's a mix of the big lines measured. The big lines measured, but these individual lines are something I calculated that's not on another, and you know. So it's just calculated. Maybe this map next door doesn't even, she could have a map next door. Maybe it's a big parcel next door. Let me put it in a different color. So this parcel next door maybe is a big parcel, okay, and he shows this line, and he shows the center line, but he doesn't come over here and show these monuments. So it's not a record. So this guy didn't show his monuments, and he didn't show these monuments, but we can, we can put those two things together in CAD and calculate, and we can say, hey, how does this fit? It's 40 feet record, and when I hold these center line mods and measure over to his math, I get 40.5. I want to know that, okay? These are what I call calculated, okay? Now, there's one other thing I use calculated for. So here's what a lot of surveyors do, and I, I don't think it, I think it sucks, okay? I'm running out of colors. Okay, so let's say this is our subject parcel right here, okay? Okay, this is going to get a measured, right? So a lot of surveyors over here will come over and they'll say, all right, I'm going to give, I'm going to show a measured and a record on my map, okay? If these are the same value, so let's say it's 40 feet. If you see this, 40 feet measured record, what does this tell you? What does that tell you about this measurement? That it matches the record. That it matches record, good. Does that make sense, Mike? Okay. Now, you come down here, he can't give you a measure. He shouldn't. A lot of guys will. A lot of guys will say, oh, okay, this is, uh, this is 100 feet. No, it's not, it's 150 feet, sorry. My drawing's obviously not scale. A lot of guys will say 150 feet measured, okay? I'll tell you what they mean by that. To the calculated property corner. What they mean is they held record. Yep. Okay? Okay, so some guys will say 150 M or 150 MR, okay? Or some guys will just say 150 R, 
Okay, that's all a little vague and ambiguous to me. I don't think you can have an M because you don't have a monument on the other side, right? And uh, so what I like to do, so what I want on my maps is a way to indicate to somebody that I held the record. Okay, it's easy if you've got a measure because you just show M and R and they're the same. But what if you can't have a measure here? Okay, so how do I indicate to Matt a year from now that I held the record? What I like to do is I say 150 C R one. What does that now tell Matt? That you calculated it based on the record one. That I held the record. Yep. I held the record R1. Yep. My cal what's mine? Of these two, which one's mine? The calculator. The C. Yep. The R1 is somebody else's. They match. That tells you that I decided to hold the record value. Okay? Love it. Alright. Why is that a calculation if it's shown on the record? Because you don't have that egg, that egg other monument to know for sure that it was measured. So, well, yeah, but you're holding, you're the, holding the record corner from that bar. I'll give you an example. Okay, good. Sorry. It, it's hard. This is confusing, so let me give you an example. Let's just say, Mike. The bearing and distance on L5 is on the record, correct? Yes. So what are we calculating? What I'm telling you is that I, the value on my survey that I calculated matches the record. That's why I'm showing that. Let me give you an example to show. It's easier to understand when they're different. I'm just thinking, why wouldn't it just say R1 then, if it's already on the map? What are we calculating? Because when you just show R1, it's not clear to me if you're holding that record value or not. I just don't know. Like, because look, what this guy might come down here, let's say I didn't measure any of this, right? Some guys will show an R1. Well, what does that mean? That, that means, when you, all you have is the R1, all that tells you is R1 said that distance. Does that tell you if you held that distance or not? The fact that you don't have a different distance on your line says that you Okay, and I think this is a little more clear, and let me give you an example that might show why. Okay, so let's go back to this example here. Okay, I'm going to make my math easy. Let's say my measured is 303. So, and those are sequential, sequentially created. So, what's my, what's the actual value on the ground here based on my survey? It's not 100. What is it? 101. 101. So, what I do on these is I show 100 R1. Okay, and then I show 101. Is that an M? No. What is it? C. Calculated based on proration. So I'd show 101 C. Okay? Now, you could argue that in this situation, the C is redundant. I understand what you're saying, yeah, right? Saying. Yeah, but, but I just like to be consistent, right? Everywhere you see a C and an R, I'm showing you what I calculated versus record. If they match, that means I held record. Okay? But you're right, you can do this. You can also do this. Let me just get rid of the C there. Okay? But the nice thing. For me, when you look at my map, if you see an M or a C, what does that mean? It means you measured it or you calculated it. That so means that you looked at that line. I surveyed it. Sure it was right. Yep. That's all. So different guys do it different ways. Okay. All right. So those are kind of my rules for these four types of distances, and you're going to see how we do that. Um, you're going to see how we how we make it work. Okay. Let me show you guys one other thing. And this this rule might not always apply. But I'm going to get on my soapbox a little bit because I think it applies most of the time. And we're actually going to see an example of that on this drawing. If I come in, if you're working for me on a boundary survey, and I see something like this, we're going to have a talk. Okay? I'm not going to say it would, that you would never do this, but it's hard for me to think of examples of why. So if we've got a line here and it says L2, L2 uh, 200. R1, and then it says 200.02 C or M, I don't care, either one. Why am I going to have a problem with that? Because the record's in front. Well, yeah, that's not it. That, that's a good answer. I do like measured in front of the record. Because right. you would hold the measure, you wouldn't be calculated. It doesn't matter either way. This is confusing. So let, I don't like this right here, and it has to do with this. I don't ask very good questions. That's why I don't get oh, right it's two hundreds. Yeah. Why do I not like that, Matt? Because you would just hold record at, at zero zero. There's nobody's going to yeah. measure that two hundreds. I mean, this is our swap. Yeah. So what did we find? The record. Yeah. So what I'd rather say, what I'd rather see is two hundred. Uh, sorry, Mike. I'd rather see that. We better be pushing a tenth before I show a difference on our record like that. 
okay, unless there's a real good reason not to. Okay, and I know that might be a little confusing, Elena, but this is this is somebody thinking they can measure better than they really can. That's the problem. You see okay. it all the time, though. Yeah, you see it a bunch. All right, so let's go look at. We're gonna right. we're gonna yeah, clean up this. <laughs> we're gonna clean up this drawing real quick. comes up, Mike, just tell me and we'll stop and wait for you to come back. I won't know about it. They call my office phone. Oh, there you go. Okay. So we're going to come in and we're going to clean up this little survey we did in San Francisco. Okay, so I already have the line work and we'll talk a little bit about how we came up with the line work. Um, but it, it hasn't been well documented, so. Is it Barbadero? No, that's a nightmare. I don't even know when I'm going to do that one. Uh, this is a little, a little parcel map. Maybe I'll save the Barcadero for when it's raining and we'll let you do it. <laughs> Go in and help me get that all cleaned up. All right. So on this survey, we did find some monuments. We also shot curves and buildings. We have some measured distances that don't fit record. We have some buildings that are half a foot over the line. We've got a guy next door to us that has set his monuments in one foot in the wrong spot. It's like there's all kinds of fun stuff on this. Sounds like Sanders So, uh, and so we can't fix all that guys, but what we do want to do is we want to make sure we put some notes in here so the next surveyor, if he have, if, if somebody has to come behind me, like, is it valuable to know that the guy next door put his monuments one foot in the wrong spot? Yep. Like, yeah, we should probably have a note that says that, right? Okay. And what I probably need to do, I don't know how recent that was. If it was in the last 10 years, what I, what I really need to do is I need to have Elena track down that guy's phone number and I need to call him. Because he's got monuments in the wrong spot. Do you know how to check the license? On or... Somebody else has got monuments in the wrong spot, but I think his were wrong. I think I know what he did. I think I know what he messed up. Okay, so let's go get... We're going to go open our drawing. So I've got our drawing with some line work in it. Okay, so boundary resolved. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open that. And we're just going to talk about this for a minute. Okay, so here's what we got, guys. We've got this long, skinny block in San Francisco. Okay, we found four monuments. Okay, these are not center line monuments, they're offset from center. Okay. And I believe we shot these with the real-time network. We're going to talk about why that might cause be causing a problem here in a minute. Okay, so what happened here? You guys see? What happened here? Two shots. You got shot twice. So that's kind of that's some of the cleanup you have to come in and do. <clears throat> Okay, so this is a control point. I can just come out of here. I don't need it in here. Okay, so when I inherited this survey, now I'm afraid to push buttons on my keyboard. I think I just locked it up. So where are the, the mods that are put off? I'll show you in a minute. That's a control point also. 
Okay, so let me tell you about what I got when I got this job, when I inherited this job. I got these four monuments and the monument lines and the center lines. I didn't get any other line work or any other monuments. Okay, so that's what I got. I got four monuments and this is, this is this, uh, what do we call this? Yeah, that's a monument line. Thanks, Mike. I was looking for that little thing right there. Is it though? It's not. It's the center line. It's messed up. Okay, so there's a, there's a five foot offset. So this is on the wrong layer. So that's part of what that's part of what I'm coming in here to clean up with you guys, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's center line. This is the monument line. Okay, which means what's over here five feet? Center line. Center line. Okay, and I will obviously check this with the map. That's obviously not right, is it? What is it, two feet? I might have to have Elena go grab the binder for me. Elena, can you go grab the binder for 190-177? It should be on the shelf, on the cabinet. Is, is this a different job than 177 or something? Yes. Okay, so it's two feet, not five feet. We'll double check that. So like this is part of the process we gotta do, right? We gotta go in and add what we're missing. Okay, now the problem here is I don't know which side the center line's on, right? It's unclear to me, so we'll have to look. I think it's on this north side. So we'll wait till she gets back and we'll confirm the distances. You're already in the street. It's so easy to tag a center line. Yeah. All right. At least to show, you know, directional. Okay, so what I got, let's just show you what I got. Okay, so pretend these two points are here. This is what I got when I started this. Okay? And here's what I needed. What we need to map, actually map, she can't find that binder. <laughs> this is what we need to map. So this is what I got. Literally, minus these points. Okay? So there's a couple problems here as soon as we start, right? Like Mike, what can you tell me about 1001? It exists. Do I know what it is? No. Do I know what reference it came off of? No. Do I know how it relates to our subject parcel? No. Yeah, and so, well, all right, well, they screwed up on that one. What about this one? What do we got? Same difference. Hey, that's mod three. I don't know if that helps you or not with this boundary resolution, but, okay, that's mod four. And that's mod two. Okay. So like I'm being a little bit you know, I'm being a little bit sarcastic, but like, did these guys help me out? No. No. Like but I had a really hard time. Like I basically had to do what with this boundary survey? Real. I had to start from scratch. Almost. I didn't go reshoot these mods, but I may end up still reshooting these mods we'll talk about what's the magenta? That's the subject parcel that we're trying to survey. I didn't get those lines either. All I got was this outside square. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's see real quick what our uh, what our uh, offsets were. Was it on the top of the file count? Sorry. It was under Julian's desk. Oh my god, I'm surprised you even found it. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> Shows the yeah, it's two feet. All right, so let's make our center lines real quick. So what he was just talking about real quickly was mm -hmm. on all these monuments that we've got out there. 
Yeah. But field crew didn't give us any information other than found mom. Mm -hmm. They didn't describe it. They didn't yeah, I don't, I don't know what, do you know what this is? Just some I, don't, I don't know what map it's from. I don't know what it is. Eighty-two point five. Half of that is what forty-one point two five. I'm trying to figure out how wide these streets are, Matt. I don't think they've got a good, a good width on them. Uh, so that's 29 and 53 is 82, 82.5, right? Let's just math it up real quick because you know I'm tired. You're right, I'm pretty sure. We've got 53.33. Sheridan Street. Can we pause this? Yeah. Colby needs help again. So uh, you need me? Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hit hit the button on the back. The red. 